We're doing a new format. It's evening time. This is Eric. We've been working together for like a long time. Yes, sir. Long but you, time. you are like a guide on the river. Yes, sir. You're a master. Kind of a big deal. Yes, sir. It is a big deal. Yeah. You're good at it. So if you ever come pick up your car, come to Mountain Home, come to this area, I guarantee Eric will put you on fish and give you a good time. But thank you, Lord. You're back here at night. Yes, sir. And brought me cupcakes, and these are awesome. So I'm here. I'm working a double shift tonight. We're doing videos again. This is not live at 11.05. I liked your suggestion live at 7.11 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is the edited version. And I'm, I'm on the school thing now, on my education. I'm not real happy that I'm here actually right now doing this because we don't have no skilled people doing it. Right. It's like, what's going on at, at our colleges, in our trade schools? I understand that. We'll get into that a little farther. Okay. But the good thing is, the guy behind the camera, hopefully he's taking notes. Because tonight we're gonna to talk about, here's what I'm gonna title it. Who knew what? And when did they know it? <laughs> it's a sticky subject. Yeah. Yeah. So if you turn someone loose in here and you want to build some parts mm -hmm. and you come back and the part's supposed to be done two weeks before that, you got a whole crew in here and the part is stuck in the mold. For instance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Who knew what and when did you know it? Okay. <laughs> Corporate wants that out of there and they want parts. I'm, I'm catching on it. Yes, That's sir. sort of stuck. We're building an inner mold for a, a whole different type of process. Mm -hmm. But who waxed it? One of the things you asked me, did you wax it? Did you do this? Did you do that? Right. Who knew, did you? And then when it's tore up and then go do something else, well, I needed that. When did you know it was screwed up? Anybody that follows school board stuff, don't get this. We, as a school board, we've been accused of being a bunch of buffoons, like we don't know what's going on and that we're being kept in the dark. I'm anyway, a, I'm not have heard that somewhere. You, <laughs> social media is <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. So what we're doing, we don't want it to stick. Right. I'm, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pay attention. I'm talking to the camera guy and anybody that's interested in this. Pay attention because if you can see this, this is rough, and you can't. It's rough. I got some 40 grit on here just to show you. I got some 600 grit. I got some 800. I mean, I can't go across that as easy as I can go across that. And I put about the same amount of pressure. Just because it's clean, just because it's slick. So I'm going to wet sand this thing, go through that. Just as it's clean, just as it's slick, doesn't mean it's going to come apart. Yeah. This is me when I first started. <laughs> Now this is me. Well, so I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to this. I've been studying this education stuff. Right. I'm not a real smart guy. I like mm -hmm. to use simple words. So, well, John, we work well together. Yeah, <laughs> we do work well. We have, we do. Yeah. And I'm a jack of all trades, and a master of a couple. Mm -hmm. You're a jack of all trades, mm -hmm. and master of a couple. Yes, sir. And I would say we both have our strengths in fiberglass. Oh yeah. And we can get to talking. I remember. Not too long ago, a salesman come in. We asked for a cleaner. Mm. And he come in selling us this cleaner. Why did he clean it? Uh, I know he got to do is shoot it. We both look at each other and look at him and go, really? <laughs> you know, kind of like, <laughs> I mean, product. I believe him for a second. Is there a new product out here? Right, right. Thank God we knew better than to listen to the guy that didn't know what he was talking about, but acted like it. Yeah, he did act like he it. He acted like it. I tell my kids, my grandkids all the time, don't believe anything you hear, read, or see. Do your own research. Don't believe us. Right. But here, here's John Dewey, this guy, old time educator dude, kind of the reason we're at where we're at back in the 1933, the Humanist Manifesto, he was assigned around that and all this other stuff. Uh, there's a philosophical school of pragmatism. Yeah. You lost me. <laughs> and while John Dewey called it instrumentalism. Mm. Yeah. Well, what it was is here's, here's kind of what it is. Focus on problem solving. And experiential. I'll be right back. Oh, the there's a long way to go. <laughs> so we got our country music going on in the back. Experiential learning rather than passing down knowledge from teacher to students. I I just totally disagree. Experiential learning, I'll tell you what, 
You can come in here and it's hot tonight. You can experience that all you want and it's hot. I don't want it to be hot. All I've experienced, we're experiencing hot. Yes, sir. But you know what happens when you experience hot? Start living right. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate yeah, we'll the color. Here's what Eric did to us. He said, you go work all winter. Then now he's working in the summer. He said, I ain't working this summer until you have air conditioning. That's right. I did, did something about it. Now, we had to put air conditioning out there. I called a couple of air conditioning guys. It took us a long time. They couldn't get it done. Right. And we had to work on it and figure it out. And, and they know what they're doing. They couldn't do it. Well, and we had to experiment. Mm-hmm. So anyway, experiential, I don't give a rip about experiential. Let's get it on. So here's, this is my, this is my thesis. You know, you do a thesis to get a doctorate. I didn't know that. I had a shirt the other day, somebody sent it to me. Um, plastic surgeon, so I'm a doctor. <laughs> we were, okay, anyway, this is Bob Chester here. Applied education, we're calling this applied education. Focus on problem solving and experimental learning. Hey, why don't we try stuff new? If it don't work, don't do it again. If it looks like it worked or you can do it better, do it that way. That's a good way to do it. As well as passing down knowledge from teacher to student. So what we're gonna do, that's gonna be kind of the focus of these videos. And since I'm on school board now, I'm gonna kind of blend that. And since we've got a college that ain't making it happen, somebody needs to ask the question, Okay, we're giving kids a, a certificate. We're putting them in debt, like huge debt that they'll never be able to pay. It's like having a mortgage with no house <laughs> and no job skills. Right. Well, maybe we should ask how come that's happening and we can't get anybody to work. Right. I mean, this job that pays okay. I mean, you can make a living at it. It's just, yeah. I yeah. mean, and you have air conditioning. It is so work. That's you got to work at it's it. It's got to work. It'll work right. at anything, though. Right. Yeah. So, anyway. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start saying, and I'm going to do, I always say there's no one right way to do it, but there are some wrong ways. So there's no one right way to make this so that Parker, uh, fiberglass glass won't stick because this is polyester resin and blah, 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 blah. We'll go into all that as we're going, but I'm going to let you get to work. I'm going to let him get to work, and I'm going to get to work myself. Natalie Deming made those. Natalie, and it's awesome. What was that? Some kind of pineapple mm. something? I mean, yes, a, I'd eat a bite for you, but I would have this frosting all over my face. <laughs> I'll save that for my personal use later. I'll get my frosting and I'll lick out of it after I'm done with you. All right, very good. We'll move on. All right, so what I'm working on here is I actually got the inner mold, uh, inner door. It's a mold for inner door on a 32 Roadster. Spirit's been around for almost 30 years now, and um, the 32 Roadster is one of the most popular hot rods out there, and we never did it, mainly because when we started it was Who's Spirit? Nobody knows who Spirit is, and all the big companies were doing a 32 Roadster. So after all these years, we've done a 23, a 27, a complete line of Model A's. We do 32, a five window, three window, 34 trucks, a lot of different cars. We finally decided we're doing a 32 Roadster. So this is the inner door for that. Getting it ready, we've never built a part out of it. I sanded it, I've got it pretty smooth now. I sanded it to uh, 800 grit. Now I always tell everybody, and pay attention to this, both if you're watching or you're behind the camera right there, the most important parts is the hardest parts to get to. This corner here, it's a pain in the butt to stick clean, but it's where the part's gonna stick. This corner here, it's a pain in the butt. I've you know, hand sanded this. It's a pain in the butt to get to. It's easy to wipe all this down, but when you get to the corners, it's like, oh, we forgot that. That's where it's gonna start sticking. As soon as that part starts sticking in here a little bit, it may pull a chunk of the mold off. It may, it just, I can pull probably a thousand parts out of here with no problem if the mold is maintained and taken care of. It can be trashed and you can stick the first part in there and never even get a part out of the mold if it's not done right. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, dig around in here for my brush. I've got a compound, it's kind of a heavy duty compound. It, uh, it works chemically more than grinding it, um, but it's a marine compound. I'll just show you real quick what it's going to look like once it's done. You get the idea, it's just getting quicker. Um, I'll just go ahead and buff all this and then show you what to do next because 
Just for that buffer between this thing, this, this part would stick in here. There's a lot more to go before you can put a part in this thing. All right, we're back again. We got Johnny Cash in the background singing uh, my, my in his suit. And uh, this is where we come down to there's no one right way, but there's wrong ways. So I buffed it, it's pretty clean. I mean, it could be better, but what it is, I'm fine. It's late at night, I'm doing a video and I got a bunch more to do. So I'm not, not cutting quality, this is gonna come out fine, the part's gonna be good, it gets painted anyway. Um, I gotta clean it now. So there's, there's multiple options. And I hate to pick up on, on a salesman, but this is a product. I asked for a set of uh, mold release products and this is the mold cleaner, but th and this is a, it's a perfect name for it too, Stoner, Stoner Molding Solutions. I'll tell you what, you take a whiff of this stuff. Yeah, they could have got a better name. And then this is Chemtrend that we've used before, but they've got a cleaner. Chemtrend's got a mold cleaner. Can't stick, can't stick, that's a good name. Can't stick by Stoner is also, so we got this free, but here's, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back to education. And, and I just mentioned to Eric, good thing we both knew better. We, we knew the salesman didn't know a lot of what he was doing. A new guy, and I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but had we not known, we could have stuck our first part in here. That's what gets me here. I'm going to read this again. This is our education system. John Dewey. Focus on problem solving by experiential learning. I don't want to experience my guy sticking a new part into this mold. That's an experience that you don't want to experience because if I experience it, you're going to experience an experience you didn't want to experience. Got that? I see a smile and a head shake behind there. Rather than passing down knowledge from teacher to students. That is a bunch of BS. Applied education, focus on problem solving and experimental learning, experimental learning, as well as passing down knowledge from student to teacher. So again, don't believe me, do your own research. The way that the product is supposed to be, that I'm told, that comes from the thing. And, and I know this from some experience. I've got to wipe this on, wipe it off, I want to get it clean. But then it needs to air dry for 15 minutes. And I do it again, so I do that two times with, with the cleaner. But I'm gonna do it more than two times. I'm gonna clean this off, because first I gotta get it clean. I'm gonna throw my rag away, and then I'm gonna get a good rag, a new rag, and then I'm gonna do it one more time. So we'll, yeah, I'll, no, I'm not gonna wipe it. You don't need to watch me wipe it, but that's what I'll do. I'll wipe it, then I'll wipe it with another rag. I'll wait 15 minutes then. And then I'll come back and clean it one more time. Now after that, I gotta go to my sealer. So there, this is gonna be porous. This is a polyester. Um, fiberglass is in there, but the polyester is what makes it hold together. And it takes a heat if there's a thermal set on it. So when it's 90 degrees today, it's gonna dry faster than when it's 70 degrees. But actually when it gets really cooked, it's gonna be at about maybe 130 degrees, don't believe me on that, but it gets warm, it gets pretty warm to the touch. So this is not fully cured, this mold. Once I put all of this on here, I'm gonna put my sealer on next. I put my sealer on and the, the directions from the salesman says, wipe it on one way, let it sit for a half hour. Wipe it on another way, let it sit for a half hour. Wipe it the other way, half hour, four times four times, four times you put your uh, your sealer on. And then you go to a, it's called a mold release. So after you do that, you put the mold release on four times. After you've done it four times, it's supposed to be ready. I don't trust it. There's a product called PVA, and I might show you that in a little farther down the sequence of these videos. Polyvinyl acetate, I believe it's called. And I, you can't, you spray it on, it's kind of a light green, and I do it except I just explained to you, what did I just explain to you, two, four, five hours worth of time to get this prepped. And you can't rush it. I mean, you can if you want, but I would suggest you don't rush it. 
at least do those times. But you need to experiment. If it's warmer out, maybe you can put it on in between. Maybe it takes you know faster. Maybe it takes a little longer. So after I get my my uh, mold release on here, I'm going to put PVA polyvinyl acetate on here because that just like puts a barrier. It's not going to stick. I know it. And once that part gets in here and it kicks while it's kicking, it's going to raise the temperature of this. It's kind of like if you paint a car or you get you get a fiberglass part. Even though it's hard and you think it's all done, you put it out in the sun, it's gonna shrink up a little bit. That's just the way it takes the heat to activate that. Another way you can do this, you can wax it. There's a couple different waxes. These are two different companies. This is a mold release wax. We've used this for years and years. I tried this one. I kind of like it. I've got two systems. I'm trying to make it all go to the, the mold release system. It waxes just like regular wax. Wax on, wax off. And it, this is again critical for this. You've got to wait in between coats of wax. Let it dry. So you got to wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Not while the wax is on. Let the wax haze, put the wax on, let it haze, take it off. That's all you can do in five minutes. Let it sit 15, 20 minutes before you put another coat of wax on. Now, if I was going to prep this a brand new mold and wax it 10 times, I want to, I'll take a piece of tape, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then when I got 10 pieces of tape, it's ready. And on a brand new mold, I will still put the PVA on it. After that, I have to wax it every time I pull a new part. Now, with the mold release, I should be able to do it, and it just wipes on. You don't even wipe it off. I should be able to do it once every six parts, you gotta, you gotta watch it, and um, I'll save that explanation for a little farther into the video. But let me clean this up, move it to the next step, and then we'll, we'll kind of finish up getting them all ready. All right, so I got this all cleaned up, wiped it a couple times. Honestly, good enough is not good enough at Spirit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on it some more, make it a lot better. I mean, it can be slick like a mirror, and why don't we make it slick like a mirror? So anyway, you got kind of the, the principle of it, and there's a lot more. So I, I kind of do these things on the, on the fly, and this is just what we happen to be doing tonight. So I think maybe we're gonna make a two-parter out of this. You working tomorrow night? Yes, sir. Well, we might. Oh no, tomorrow night I have a school board meeting. I won't be here. We'll save this for maybe Thursday, Wednesday. You be back Thursday? Yes, sir. So a properly wax mold is gonna have a part in it. And then if the part's in there and it ain't too, too messed up, you should be able to just drive a wedge in there. And pull the part up. That's pretty good. You can kind of see the edges here. This is from poor treatment of the mold. I had to do some repairs. Um, is what it is, but the part comes out. There's always something about getting the part, especially the first time you've ever pulled a part out of a mold, something you've created. We created a plug, that shape, and then we made a mold on top of the shape, and now it's gotta fit inside the door jam, and the outside door got the outer door's gotta go on it, the hinges gotta go in the sockets. So we'll see how that goes. Before I finish though, help me out. We used to do live at 1105, this is a different format totally. I need a different name because it's not, well, I'm, this is not, hey, on BC, this is Spirit Cars, and we're live at 1105. No, no, this is late at night, where it's the edited version. So give me, well, give me a new name for it, but we always used to do Trigger Time. And I enjoyed Trigger Time because, you know, especially it triggered my, my woke socialist friends. But now, for the new Trigger Time and the new series here, I think I'm gonna dedicate this one to my far right fascist friends. And uh, part of trigger time was, it wasn't about politics, and now that I'm on uh, the school board, even though there's a segment of our culture that thinks uh, that all this school's about is we're trying to teach uh, Johnny how to be Sally, or just because they do it in San Francisco, they think we do it in Mountain Home too, or whatever, and that we should defund all public education. Not my thing. I'm like all about 
industrial arts. We are, Mountain Home Public Schools is awesome. We, we are doing a composites program. Now they're struggling to get it started and they're going, but the college also has that kind of stuff. And, and I, but I'm gonna go, here's where I'm gonna go. There's a, how come our kids are getting a certificate, a debt, and no job skills when they come out of three, four years, two years of whatever education past high school. We, we need to change our culture. So we need to put some pressure on education, hard pressure, because we want some results. We want to we want to pass down these skills. But I think today's trigger time should be, normally I got a, a Bible in my truck, a Bible laying around here, Bible, everything, that's what trigger time is. We just read the word of God and that will trigger some people like nothing else will. So it says probably in the, in the Gospels, I'm sure, uh, judge not, least you be judged. I normally don't preach during it, I have our trigger time, but you know, Jesus himself, he wasn't a big fan of the Pharisees. He called them out a lot of times. And I just cannot imagine somebody going into the temple and, and with a whip and turning over money tables and driving them out. Now that was like, so judge not, at least you be judged, may not be exactly what it means or what we think it means. Um, so let me tell you what I think it means. You want to judge me? I don't care. You got no heaven and no hell to put me in. So I'll do what I believe is right. You do what you believe is right. And if we want to call ourselves Christian, maybe we should deal in love a little bit more than we do in hate and accept some of those folks around us. It's all God's creation. We're God's creation. You're God's creation. It's all God's creation. And if you want to hate his creation, Thank God I'm not your judge. Amen.